Hi, my name is Divya Kalimuthu and I'm the Functional Safety Engineer for Tensilica IP. Welcome to another episode of uh, Whiteboard Wednesday. The topic for today's discussion is functional safety. So what is functional safety? The whole concept of functional safety is we want to create a safe product and the product in some way is functioning the way it's supposed to function. For example, when we apply a brake, you expect the car to stop and let's say your camera malfunctions, it's supposed to indicate in some way to the user saying that I'm, I've gone wrong and I need uh, some sort of a protection mechanism. So that whole concept is functional safety. So if you talk about various uh, applications like ADAS, autopilot, self-driving, these are all um, a very, uh, like a hot market currently where everybody's talking about functional safety there. So. The reason why it's uh, important is because you're trying to avoid or reduce the risks involved because we have people in, in, the, in these cars. So let's talk about this uh, supply chain for uh, what happens. We have an IP supplier. They give their IP to uh, a tier one who could be an associate uh, maker. And they supply it to their tier two and then eventually it makes it into the OEM which is the actual vehicle. So, during all of these different stages of the supply chain, you have different uh, products or um, system, if you will, that is being uh, uh, developed. So you need to ensure that each of these are actually satisfying uh, of the functional safety uh, protocol. So in order to do that, we have what we call the ISO 26262. So ISO 26262 is an automotive standard that is targeted for electronics that go into a safety application into a vehicle. So the standard actually provides guidelines to all of these different tiers that are involved in actually making uh, the electronics that go into the car. So you can have software, you have tools, you have IP, you have a product, you have a system. So the 26262 standard actually provides guidelines to do all of these. Some of the Major ones are actually, it provides requirements. It provides requirements how you need to develop your safety product. It tells you all your uh, necessary procedures and steps in order to take care of your safety activities. So now that we have different levels and different activities that are involved, how are you going to categorize what you need to do? So that is, the standard sets something called uh, the metrics which is what we call the ASIL. ASIL stands for Automotive Safety Integrity Level. So your ASIL levels are actually four types, A, B, C, and D. The ASIL A has a 60% safety level that you need to meet. B has a 90, C has 97, and D has a 99%. So D, ASIL D has the highest level of safety, which means your, your risk is super, super low here. So mostly in an ACIL D targeted application, for example, you're trying to make a braking system so you cannot or probably minimize the risks to almost to a negligent uh, level. And ACIL A, for example, you have a low uh, ACIL target to meet. This is where you have applications like a rear light. So now the standard gives you all of, you have these four categories in which based on where you fit in, you develop your activities based on all you all, the standard provides you the uh, required procedures that are necessary to create your uh, safety product. The standard also uh, tells you what are called work products. Work products is basically a piece of evidence that tells that I have done what I'm supposed to do based on this ACIL level that the standard has quoted. So. Typically, your work product is a safety manual, and you have the safety manual talks more about your product that is in use, where your end application is, and how you developed your product. So it's, it's more, along with your technical documentation, a safety manual is one of the key documents that you need to use as a customer if you are developing a, a safety product. And the next one is what we call a DIA. A DIA is a developer interface agreement. So if you notice, we have two sets of people that are involved in uh, the supply chain. One is your supplier and the other one is your customer. So 
when you are when you have this sort of uh, an interfacing you have to have agreement that is saying that okay here are my responsibilities that the standard requires me to do which i will do but you also have to agree to some certain activities from your uh, to the to your supplier so that is actually part of what we call the dia which is usually signed uh, and it's agreed between the two parties involved the standard actually also gives you the uh, uh, flexibility to tailor your product. So now that I also re already mentioned, you have several levels in which you can uh, develop a safety product. So you have tools, you have system, you have test, you have hardware, you have software. So you can tailor your product and the standard allows you to actually tailor your development life cycle um, based on exactly what you're trying to uh, uh, qualify. So with Tensilica, uh, we do. We are an IP supplier, so we actually develop this as a CIOC. CIOC is actually safety element out of context, which means I do not know what my end application is. So I'm going to create my IP in such a way that I, ha I will have some assumptions that I have considered, and anybody choosing this can use it. So stay tuned for another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday to learn more about Tensilica's uh, safety product. Thank you.